Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 5, the chapter where we learn how to compute derivatives directly using rules of differentiation. And basically, if there's one thing that you will remember about Cal 1 when you're old and you're having like kids annoying you and saying, what did you do in Calculus 1? You will be able to say, well, I've computed derivatives. And then those kids will tell you like, oh, what did you do with those derivatives? And then you will answer like, nothing. <laughs> no, no. So, um, so it is the most important chapter of the whole semester. You need to know how to compute derivatives uh, for computing derivatives, of course, but also uh, when we're going to look at applications. Um, typically, computing derivatives will be like the crucial part of the computations. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, th and the difference between this chapter and the previous chapter is that we're really just learning tricks to get to the derivative so that we can use that derivative to do other things with it. But chapter five is all about finding that derivative. Um, even if it's the most important chapter, it's not the most difficult. Okay, so there's a lot of rules, a lot of formulas, but with practice, these things um, get very second nature. Like, I, like the toughest chapter in calculus one will always be okay the one with uh, limits okay so and we've done that one already so anyways let's start so first section basic formulas and basic rules of differentiation before we move forward i'm just going to use um, present a couple of different notation so if you have a function y equal f of x and you want to compute the derivative then there's a couple of ways you can write the derivative you can either write it as f prime so this is typically what i'll be using in, in class or, and this will be a, it's a big, big notation, but it's very useful when you're explaining things and how things are being um, uh, combined together. So you might see d over dx in bracket f of x. That's also compute the derivative of f of x with respect to x. If we say compute df over dx, that's also the derivative of f with respect to x. Or if y is equal to f of x, we might ask you to compute dy dx. Typically, I'll be using f prime. While I'm writing solution, I might be using d dx for, uh, for intermediate computations. And later on, when we see applications of differentiation and we talk about implicit differentiation, the dy dx will uh, come back a lot. All right, so let's go to the basic formulas first. So if you start with the most basic function, which is a constant function, so if f of x is equal to c, then the derivative of c is equal to zero. So f prime is equal to zero. And here, I already drew for you a little graph for f of x. So I have this horizontal line. The height of that horizontal line is c. And I have a point a inside the domain. Of course, the constant function is always defined everywhere. So if you are picking that point A and you're trying to compute the slope of the tangent line at any point, well, poof, you can see it here, like on top of A, if you are looking at F prime, so if you come, if you draw the slope of the tangent line, that line is going to be horizontal. So an horizontal line corresponds to a, uh, a slope of zero. So F prime of zero. So remember F prime, should have mentioned this earlier, but F prime is something that computes slopes on the graph. And of course, if you have a constant function, if you pick any point on that graph, the slope of the tangent line will always be horizontal, so always going to be equal to zero. All right, that's for that formula. So if you compute derivative of any constant, you always get zero. So what if your function is the basic linear function y equal x, so f of x equal x, so the basic, basic um, line equation, so y equal x, so slope of one and uh, y-intercept of zero. Well, the derivative of x with respect to x is equal to one or f prime of x is equal to one. And this is not a surprise here. So I drew for you again, the function of f of x equal x. I have a point A and then if I pick up, if I look at the corresponding point on the graph and I draw the slope of the tangent line, boom. Okay, so here, what do I have? Well, I have a line and that line is going to be uh, of slope, the same slope as the line itself. And the slope is going to be, of course, uh, equal to one. And in fact, I have a nice little remark here, um, and this is like a very intuitive remark. If you start with a linear function, y equal mx plus b, if you remember, 
that the derivative is trying to compute the slope of the tangent line. Well, if you have a linear function, the slope of the tangent line, well, the tangent line at any point is going to be the line itself. So of course, the slope of that line is going to be the same. So it's going to be m. So if your function is of the form mx plus b, then its derivative is going to be m. So the derivative is a slope calculator. So for a line, you're going to get m. Okay, so very nice, cute remark here. So it's, of course, attuned with the natural ideas uh, behind derivatives. So anyway, so the first formula that is kind of uh, trickier uh, is the power function. So after constant functions and linear function, the next evolution okay, is power function. So how do you compute the derivative of a function of the form x to the power n? Well, the idea here is that the power n falls up front as a coefficient, and then the new power is the former power n, but then minus one. So the derivative of x to the power n is n times x to the power n minus one. Uh, and I would say in terms of, you know, which of the basic formulas are the toughest to master, that's the toughest one. It's not a tough one, but it's the toughest one. So anyways, let's just practice a bunch of examples. So for example, here for a, uh, if x is equal to, sorry, if f of x is equal to x squared, what is f prime? Well, here for f prime, um, so the power is just 2, so the coefficient falls up front, the power falls up front as a coefficient, so you get 2 times x to the power 2 minus 1, and then can, this can be cleaned up to 2x to the power 1, and of course x to the power 1, we're just going to write that up as 2 times x. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. And this is not a surprise. We computed the derivative of x squared using the formal limit definition, and we got 2x before in the past. But now let's do an, a more uh, advanced one. So what happens if you have x to the power 7? Now if we use a power rule, so if we want to compute f prime, so the 7 falls up front as a coefficient. And the new power is the form of power minus 1. And this can be simplified to 7 times x to the power 6. All right, so and just a small remark here. If you want to compute the derivative of x to 7 using the formal um, definition, it's going to be long, maybe very, very long. All right, the next two examples, uh, the next few examples are probably the ones that will cause you trouble uh, initially. So if you have the square root of x, so the square root of x is a power function where the power is x, sorry, where the power is one half. And maybe just as a recall here, so there's two rules from algebra that you'll need to remember if you're computing the nth root of x. That's the same thing as x to the power 1 over n. So this is, and of course, if the n is not there, it's because by default is the uh, square root, and you get that it's x to the power 1 half. So now that we see the corresponding power of that function, we apply the power rule. So when you're computing f prime, the 1 half falls up front. The new power is the form of power minus 1, so you get 1 half x to the power minus one half. That's enough, you can leave it like this, but if you want to simplify, that would be the same as one over two, x to the power one half, and one, and x to the power one half is again, root of x, okay? So you don't need, if the question is simply to compute the derivative, as long as you have the correct power, I don't wanna see like a minus one in the power, but if you have the corresponding power, even if it's negative, I don't care. I just wanna see if the rule or the formula is applied uh, correctly. So for the second one, we have 1 over x. Remember, x is power 1. So if you bring x up as x to the power minus 1, so remember the other rule I'm using here is if you have x to some power the denominator, you can bring it up and have, and have x to the power minus n. So here the correct power for 1 over x is x to the power minus 1, and now I'm using that power formula. So you get that f prime is minus 1, so the power falls up front as a coefficient, and the new power is the form of power minus 1, so you get minus 1 times x to the minus 2. If you want to simplify this, you would get minus 1 over x squared. Again here, uh, if you just focus on the algebraic version, I don't need the simplified version. Again, normally, you will need to simplify if you have to use that derivative for something else, but that's not going to be the goal of this chapter. 
Uh, now next, one over x7, that's the same thing as x to the power minus seven, so the correct power is minus seven. So when you're computing f prime, so the minus seven falls up front, the new power is the former power minus one, so minus seven minus one, so you get minus seven times x to the power minus eight, that would be nice, but if you want to simplify, you get minus seven over x to the power eight. And the last one, uh, it's kind of boring, okay, but the last one is just power pi. Um, so the power pi here will just fall up front, so if you're computing f prime, so the coefficient will be pi, and the new power will be the former one minus one, and there's really nothing else you can do here, just leave it like this. All right, so again here, the most difficult part with the power formula is just to make sure you have the correct power. The only time that the power is not clear is if you have a square root or an nth root in general, and you have to write the corresponding power, remembering that the nth root of x is x to the power of one over n. And if you have a power term, but at the denominator, if you have one over x to the n, you can you have to bring that x to the n up as x to the power minus n, and you have to use the power rule on that expression. Okay, so, but uh, that's it for that example using the power formula. There's other um, basic formulas, but the basic formulas for the other terms are actually not too difficult to, to learn. You just have to learn them, and there's really no examples. It's just like a bunch of formulas that you need to remember. So after a constant function, a linear function, and a power function, the next functions that you study are exponential functions. So for us, for now, we will only focus on the basic exponential term e to the x, uh, so the exponential term where the base is 2.1, etc., the um, Euler number. So the formula is the following, derivative of ex is ex again. Okay, so nothing too hard here. What about the uh, reciprocal formula of ex, the inverse function of ex, which is the logarithmic function base e or ln of x? Well, the derivative of ln of x is simply 1 over x. And... Um, uh, what about the trig functions, the two basic trig functions, sine and cosine? If you differentiate sine, uh, you're going to get cosine, and if you differentiate cosine, you're going to get minus sine. So all the basic formulas are the following. The derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of a line, mx plus b, is just m. The derivative of a power function, x to the n, is n times x to the power n minus 1. The derivative of ex is ex again, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Those are all the basic formulas. And to practice these basic formula, we're going just to introduce the basic rules. So the basic rules are the following. So what happens if you're constructing a new function by either multiplying it by a coefficient, or if you're creating a new function by addition or subtraction? And in those two cases, there's really nothing to do. You just have to keep the structure alive. What I mean by this is that if you have a function f and you need to compute the derivative of a multiple of f, where that multiple is c, so what is the derivative of c times f of x? Well, it's c times f prime. So you just keep the coefficient and you differentiate f, and then you're going to get your derivative for c f of x. So if you have a coefficient in front of a term, so what is the derivative of 5 times sine of x? Well, it's 5 times cos of x, okay, so you just keep the 5 up front. So what happens if you construct a function that has a bunch, that has a bunch of additions, so a bunch of different terms? Well, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, of the derivatives. so the derivative of f of x plus g of x is f prime plus g prime, and it's the same thing for, for subtraction, because, of course, uh, when you when you do a subtraction, it's as if you're adding something times minus one. So by the previous rule, you just multiply the answer by minus one. But anyways, if you have the derivative of f minus g, it's going to be f prime minus g prime. So you can really differentiate term by term, no problemo. Okay, so let's just do examples so that we can practice basic formulas and basic rules of differentiation. So here we go. Okay, so uh, first one, so a, so our function is 7 times x squared minus 3x plus 2. So the 7 is just a coefficient, so I keep it. The derivative of x squared, I know it's 2x. The derivative of minus 3x, I keep the minus 3. Of course, you could use the idea that 
minus 3x plus 2, that's the linear part, the slope is minus 3, but I'm going to do it in pieces, so derivative of x is 1, derivative of 2 is 0, so if I clean my act here, I get 14x minus 3. For a question like this, the answer is the solution. Here I'm overdoing it just to show you all the steps, but normally when you have to differentiate that thing on a test using rules, you just write 14 minus 14x minus 3 and that's it. Okay, so for B here, so the next example, suppose I have, so for B, um, I have 2 times x to the 7 minus 7 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. So here we go, so the 2 stays, so x7 will go to 7 times x to the power of 6 minus 7 times 2x. Again here, if you can write 14x squared minus 14x, go for it. And the minus 2x plus 1, I'm just going to use that. This is the linear part, so you just get the slope, which is minus 2. So this can be simplified to 14x to the power of 6 minus 14x minus 2. So the next two examples are probably the toughest one because you have to do some algebraic preliminaries before you can do stuff. So root of x so 4 root of x is 4 times x to the power 1 half. And cubic root of x is x to the power 1 third. So 6 cubic root of x is 6 x to the power minus 1, uh, one third, sorry, uh, not minus. So now when you apply the rules to compute f prime, so the 4 stays up front, the 1 half falls, the new power is 1 half minus 1 minus 6 to 1 third falls, the new power is 1 third minus 1, and now if you simplify things a bit, 4 times 1 half, that's just 2, x to the power minus 1 half, and then 6 times 1 third is again 2, x to the power, remember 1 is 2 over 3, so 1 half minus 1 is minus 2 third. And here you don't need to worry about negative coefficient, you can leave the answer like this, I'll be super happy. So next example, again, some uh, algebraic preliminaries here. So 2, I bring the, the x up, so you get x to the power minus 1. And the x cube up, you get x to the power minus 3. So you can clearly see the powers involved here. So if I compute f prime, I'm going to get 2, open the bracket, minus 1, x to the power minus 1, minus 1 minus 3, open the bracket, minus 3, x to the power minus 3, minus 1. Again here, I'm doing all the details. If you can get to the answer right away as minus 2, x to the power minus 2, plus 9, x to the power minus 4, I'll be super happy. Okay, so you don't have to worry too much. All right, the next two examples is just to review the other formulas that I just freshly uh, introduced. So if you want to compute the derivative of 4ex, so for the next one, so if f of x is 4ex minus 3 ln of x minus 2, then f prime is 4 times the derivative of ex, which is ex, minus 3 times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, and the derivative of minus 2 is 0. You can write minus 0 or not, it does not really matter. If I clean my act here a bit, so getting rid of my bracket, I get 4ex. And you could leave minus 3 times 1 over x or write it as minus 3 over x. It does not really matter. Okay, so that's uh, for e. And now for f, I have 5 times sine of x minus 2 times cosine plus root of 2. So if I, I want to get f prime, so you get 5 times root of sine. That turns into a cosine. Um, minus 2 times root of cosine, which is minus sine. And root of 2 is just a constant here, so you just get plus 0. So if you clean your stuff here, you're going to get 5 cos of x. And minus, min minus 2 times minus 1 is going to become plus 2 sine of x. Again here, for all those six examples, if you get to the answer, uh, it's the complete solution. Okay, So here I'm just trying to do it in pieces so that you can feel it a bit. But... Um, uh, there's really not much into it. You just need to learn these formulas and just apply the basic rules. But for basic formulas and basic rules of differentiation for that first section, it's of course the foundation for everything else. Make sure you really know your basic formulas before we can move forward and your basic rules because when we're, we're constructing functions by doing a product, a quotient, or a chain or a composition, we have to apply the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule that we'll see in the next section. But anyways, for that section, okay, that's it. That's all. 
Bye-bye, là.